to welcome back to my channel today is January 30th and I'm here with my final wrap-up video for my 2019 reading I think I'm considering that this is still early just because I managed to get this video filmed in January as opposed to carrying it over to February which almost happened but I just wanted to come on here and recap my statistics from my reading from last year I don't know if any of you are still interested in getting this kind of data from me but I like to have a record of my reading so even if I'm just making this video for myself I decided to make it and I'll post it here so just in case you want to read it watch it <laughs> just in case you want to watch it it will be here for you to see it will be a way for me to compare my reading over several years even though in this video I'm not going to compare my reading to prior years there was a lot that happened in 2019 I consider it a win that I read so many books I didn't meet my bookish goals I've talked about that in a previous video which I'll link down below if you haven't watched that and you're interested in seeing how I did with my goals or what I said in the beginning of the year was my goals and I just kind of fell away from all of that during the year we're not gonna go over that information what we are going to do today is just kind of recap what did happen. So I read 171 books last year. And in terms of monthly breakdown, if you watch my videos throughout the year, then you would have known in January, I read 15 books, February, 21 books, March, 18, April and May, I read 14 books, June, I read nine books, July, I read 16, August, I read 15, even though I planned to read 30. September again I plan to read 30 and I read 23 October was when I had this little one I read 11 books because she came at the end of the month but in November went all the way down to nine books and December six books so a total of 171 books in 2019 how did that break down in terms of gender I mostly read books by women it seems or well you know it's a little surprising I read 97 books by female writers and 74 books by male writers so I do read more <laughs> female books but not that many I thought I read more in terms of source I keep track of um, I should tell you um, I'm, I'm reading this from my laptop I have a spreadsheet on Excel where I keep my information throughout the year because sometimes Goodreads says I've read a book at a different time than when I've read it but in any case source in terms of reading from my shelves last year I wanted to read more from my shelves and I read almost the exact number of books that I bought so I read 64 books from my shelves mm, that's not quite true I read 64 books that were mine that I didn't have to return to some other source um, of those owned books I count books that I purchase and read right away or books that publishers send me and I read for review or books that were already on my shelves at the beginning of the year so I didn't keep track well I did but I'm not gonna talk about it too much in this video but I did <laughs> read 64 books that were mine I read 82 things from the library and in terms of NetGalley downloads because I got electronic copies to read from a publisher that accounted for 11 books what's up you want to see me <laughs> you could just look in the camera here you go here are both of us yeah in terms of the breakdown between fiction and nonfiction, this was I think the most surprising to me of the 171 books that I read 148 of them were fictional <laughs> I only read 23 things that were nonfiction, and seven of those were graphic memoirs because I read three March books that were graphic memoir of John Lewis's life, and I read the three books that were Arab of the Future uh, by Riyad Satouf, and I read Persepolis, which was by Marjan, I can't remember the name of the author, but those were seven graphic memoirs that's included in that 23 number I didn't read a lot of nonfiction last year as you can tell but I didn't focus on nonfiction this year I would like to read more nonfiction so that's something that came out of this data that I'm interested in using my tracker to actually influence as I go through in 2020 that's 
as much of the raw data as I wanted to share. The only other thing that I wanted to talk about was my country spread. I usually do a video where I go through the countries of the world that I read throughout the year. That is something that I want to do and I've been actively trying to do in the past few years. I try to alphabet country alphabet challenge where I try to read a country that starts with A, a country that starts with B, a country that starts with C, all the way through the alphabet. I'll link my previous year results videos in the description box as well if you're interested in going to check that out. But this year, I just don't have time to go through my shelves or go through and find all the books to come back and make that video to make it pretty. So I'm just going to tell you that I read from 30 countries not including the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada. What I will do is I will tell you the countries that I read from, and if she takes a nap early enough for me to edit this video, I'll edit and show you pictures of the titles, pictures of the covers of the books that I read that represented each of those countries. But I'll tell you right now, in alphabetical order, here are the countries that I read from in 2019. We almost finished. Algeria. Oh, the titles are right here, so I'll tell you. I read from Algeria, <laughs> set in Algeria. I read The Stranger by Albert Camus. I read Where'd You Go, Bernadette by Maria Semple, which actually had an Antarctica setting. Argentina, I read Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. Australia, I read Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty, Charlotte Woods, The Natural Way of Things, and Terra Nullius by Claire G. Coleman. And those were mainly because I participated in a readathon called Aussie April, where the focus was to read books by Australian authors in April. Um, I also read The Mother in Law by Sally Hepworth, which was set in Australia. I am not counting Canada, but if I did, I would tell you that I read Susie Krause's Valencia and Valentine, the other way around, Valentine and Valencia. Um, I read books from China, The Good Earth by Pearl Buck and Love in the New Millennium by Kan Shu. From Colombia, I read Fruit of the Drunken Tree by Ingrid Rojas Contreras and The General in His Labyrinth by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. From Croatia, I read Girl at War by Sabin Sarah Novich from Egypt. My inaugural Booker Prize read was PH Newbis is something to answer for. Mm. The Wife by Meg Wolitzer had a setting in Finland. In France, I have The Gourmet Rhapsody by Muriel Barbary and The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. Mm. <laughs> from Germany, I have three books The Unhappiness of Being a Single Man by Franz Kafka, The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris. And All Quiet on the Western Front by Eric Maria Remark. In Greece, I have three more titles as well. Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants by Anne Brasheris has a setting in Greece. Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker has a Grecian setting. And Travels with Epicurious by Daniel Klein is set in Hydra, I think. One of the islands of Greece. Uh, I read Aidi by Roxane Gay, which has a setting in Haiti. I read Burial Rites by Hannah Kent, which is set in Iceland, that covered the story of Agnes, a Magnus' daughter. In India, I have several titles. One Part Woman by Paramal Morrigan, The Siege of Krishnapur by J.G. Farrell, Heat and Dust by Ruth Parajabala, and Staying On by Paul Scott. All three of those were Booker winners. And I have Girls Burn Brighter and An Unrestored Woman, both by Shoba Rail and The Far Field by Madhuri Vijay. All of those were set in India. I read The Stationery Shop, which was set in India. That author is Marjan Kamali. I also have several books set in Ireland. I read Troubles by J.G. Farrell, Milkman by Anna Burns, Patty Clark Ha 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 by Roddy Doyle. All three of those were previous Booker winners. And I read The History of the Rain by Neil Williams, which was also, I think, shortlisted for the Booker some years ago. In Italy, I have Hollow Heart by Viola de Grado and The Swerve by Stephen Greenblatt. And my Jamaican book, I read Almost Home by Ruma Chopra, which covered the story of the Maroons. In Japan, I read Snow Country by Yasunari Kawabata. In Korea, South Korea, I read The Girl Who Wrote Loneliness by Kyung Suk Shin. In Liberia, I had She Would Be King by Wayuta Moore. Even though that had multiple settings, I used it because it ended in Liberia. I recorded it as Liberia. 
In Nepal, I read Into Thin Air by John Krakauer. That was the story of the tragedy on Mount Everest. In Nigeria, I had My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyinkan Brathwaite and The Famished Road by Ben Okri. From Pakistan, I read In the Orchard, The Swallows by Peter Hobbs and Unmarriageable by Sonia Kamal. I read Love from A to Z by S.K. Ali, which was set in Qatar. Yeah. And in Singapore, I had Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan and How We okay. Disappeared, God Bless You by Jing Jing Lee. So I had four titles that were yeah. set in South Africa. Mother to Mother by Sindewa Magona, The Conservationist by Nadine okay. Gordimer, Master Harold and the Boys by Athol Fugard, and Disgrace by J.M. Coetzee. Take your hand out of your mouth, baby. In Spain, I had Founders of Silence by Ruta Cepedes. In Sweden, I had two books, Beer Town by Frederick Bachman and The Summer Book by Tove Jansen. In Switzerland, I had Hotel du Lac by Anita Bruckner, which is a previous Man Booker winner. From Trinidad, I had three books, Golden Child by Claire Adam and A House for Mr. Biswas and Miguel Street, both by V.S. Naipaul. And that was it. After that, I have titles set in the United Kingdom and USA, which I'm not counting. And then of course, several books that had fictional settings, which I'm not counting either. So those are the titles that I read last year that were set in foreign countries that do not include United States, United Kingdom, or Canada. So that's my 2019 reading stats that I wanted to share with you. So after this, I think tomorrow's video, if I do make a video tomorrow, is going to be my reading recap. And we'll move on to February. Hey. February TBR and so on. So thanks for watching this video. She wants to go back to eating her hand. No, I can't let you do that. But we'll be back for another video really soon. You know, some people put mittens on their babies. Is that what you want me to do for you? No, you don't want that. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you want to see more. We'll be back for another video real soon. <laughs> I'd love to chat with you in the comments. If you made a stats video that you'd like to share with me, go ahead and link it down below. Otherwise, tell me something. What from this video resonated with you? <laughs> Even if you just want to share tips on how I can get her to stop biting her hand. Well, she's not really biting. She doesn't have teeth. But I don't want her to suck her fingers. Let's chat in the comments. Until next time, happy reading. Bye. <laughs> you like that video? Mm -hmm. You like the video? We made a video today. Yeah. We made a video. We made a video.